Nice. Oh, that's a better one. They are blowing up like crazy right here. This is ridiculous. When that water's flowing, getting up underneath those dams is just a great way to start your day out. There he is. That's a better one. Oh. <laughs> Sweetwater, presented by Waypoint. So how did the Harris chain down in Florida treat you this time around? Harris Chain's always awesome, man. I mean, when I was going to college at University of Central Florida, uh, I fished the Harris Chain quite a bit. It was one of the three chains of lakes, you know, it was Kissimmee Chain, Okeechobee, and the Harris Chain that I fished tournaments on. And so I've got a lot of history there, but it's been so long since I fished there during the late summer. You know, that late summer, early fall time period can be really tough, but it also means that you can do a lot of different stuff. And the great thing about the Harris Chain isn't just the simple fact that the fishing's great and the lakes are so diverse. Lake County in particular, they do a really good job of really improving the fish habitat, keeping the old Florida feel, you know, the wildlife, all the different types of birds and, and everything they've got going on there. That really is a cool fishery and there's so many different options from all the different lakes. Each lake has some similarities, but a lot of differences too. Number one, look at that. Harris chain bass, nice and white. On the mag fatties. Dude, they love a straight tail worm on the Harris chain. And in Florida in general, nice little fish, man. Put him back. <laughs> that, was, that was so much fun. First Harris chain fish. Oh, man, it's good to be back. Put him back, we got bigger fish to catch. So the reason I was, I was really just honed in on this point is because it's the last major point before it goes into this, this bay here. And these are really good spawning bays. Um, I'm probably not gonna fish in the back of the bay that much, but the point is just, you know, that's where all those fish kind of live during the early season. And then all of a sudden they come out here and uh, you can catch them on these, these points. Real close to the main lake here. And it's got a great, thickness of, of Kissimmee grass. Not too thick, but definitely not too thin. Shaker, there he is. There he is. Another one. And what did I say? On the point. Man, they love that Mad Fatties, let me tell you. Not a big one. This is not what the Harris Chain is known for right here. This is, I would say that the Harris chain has one of the best average size of fish um, in Florida. You know, lots of three pounders, lots of four pounders, and a ton of big ones too. But that was a lot of fun to catch. So I know there's more than one lake on the Coosa River. There's more than just Logan Martin that you fish all the time but I heard that you did fish a lake called Mitchell. Tell me a little bit more about that. Yeah, you know, Mitchell is one of those lakes that is very unique to the, on the Coos River system, and it's different than all the rest. There's not as many boat docks, not as many houses. It's just less inhabited, so it's very beautiful. It's got incredible big bluff walls and Spanish moss in the trees, and it's just a really pretty place to fish. But just like any of the Coos River lakes, it's got current. And when that water's flowing, getting up underneath those dams is just a great way to start your day out and to go figure out if that bite's happening, it can be game on. They are blowing up like crazy right here. They might be striper, but we're gonna find out, that's for sure. I might need to throw an A-rig in them. Oh, 
There we go. Oh gosh, it's going to be a striper day for a little bit anyways. <laughs> that one patted it as soon as it hit the water. Oh man, that's a mean one. You got to keep them out of the rocks. I might have two on there now. Yeah, I got a double. I'd say they're up here. The stripe anyways. <laughs> I'm going to hit anchor mode. All right. That's a start. It's something. We're going for big spots today, but I'll play around with these guys for a few minutes anyways. Doubled up on the umbrella rig. I got these minnows on here. These are the smelt colored minnows, and I got one that's a bad chad color in the middle of it. This is ridiculous. I gotta get back in there. For more sweet water action, check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And remember, you can watch any episode, any device, anytime on waypointtv.com. Sweetwater is brought to you by Waypoint TV. Stream the best in hunting and fishing series. Download the app today. Wiley X. B&W Trailer Hitches. Towing Adventure. Battleborn Batteries. Get out there. Stay out there. Power Pole. Swift, silent, secure. And by Scales. Every degree of water. All of the Coosa River is loaded with striper. I mean, that's one cool thing about those lakes. Or if you just want to have fun or take a kid fishing, I mean, those striper are absolutely amazing. And as soon as I shut the boat off, I started hearing this erupting in the fog. And I'm like, what is going on? And I trolled forward a little bit in that heavy current. And all of a sudden, I mean, it was literally thousands of fish just exploding Whoa. all over the place. That's awesome. Absolutely pounding it. Oh, I think I just got another one. That one might be a little bigger. Jeez Louise, this is insane. God, they're so strong. Another double. <laughs> There's a hybrid. Hybrid and a saltwater stripe. You can see the difference that this hybrid right here, he's got more of a broad body. And then the saltwater stripe's more narrow. So right here you got the the hybrid, you can see the broken up lines and see the wider body. Then you got the longer, skinnier. I mean, he's not longer than this hybrid, but that's the solid line, true saltwater Coosa River stripe. <laughs> okay, we'll see how long this umbrella rig lasts. This is a tough one. This one doesn't tear up normally, but these are some mean, mean fish. You know, in recent years, I've been fishing Florida uh, during the spring. You know, where you, the tournaments usually uh, come here in, in January or February, and I try to avoid the wind at all costs. But but every other part of the year, you know, when the water is warmer, man, it's all about those those uh, windy banks, and not like really windy, but just enough wind. You can see here we've got some uh, a good little breeze coming in, some chop, and uh, and then it kind of rounds the corner and calms down. This is the perfect spot. Um, to, to, to target fish because those bass are, are hunting down all the bait fish that are getting blown down around this corner. And uh, so it's, it's really important to fish, you know, the, the banks that aren't necessarily just getting pounded by the wind, but have a good amount of wind, a little bit of a breeze uh, to kind of uh, push those bait fish around and keep them active. That's cool that they bite in the wind there, that it actually is your friend. You know, all my fishing experience has been in the cold months in Florida, like you right. said. So that's pretty neat to see that it kind of fishes, it sounds like what the rest of the country fishes like in the summer and the fall, the wind is your friend. Yeah, really in Florida, if you're not in those condensed funnel areas, like the rivers that connect all the different lakes, you really need to find current in some form or fashion. And a windblown current is a huge, huge factor. All right, here we are, the sweet spot. 
This is like right where the, oh, there he is. There he is. Nice. Oh, that's a better one. What did I tell you, the sweet spot. I was just about to say, man, this is like the perfect spot right here. This is where I've been seeing all the activity. That's a better fish right there. So <laughs> just when I said that this is the sweet spot, uh, I get this bite. And, and the reason I said that this is the sweet spot right here is we've got this breeze that's blowing around this corner and then we've got calmer water right here. So those fish are just right in that seam where that, that, that wind starts to calm down. And you get a better fish right there. That's what you get for working through an area twice. They're getting bigger. Nice Lake County bass. Nice. Awesome. Man, that was another awesome day on the water. We fished hard today. <laughs> <laughs> and the troll motor worked hard today yeah. too. We covered some serious ground, that's for sure. That's one of the amazing things about Battleborn batteries is the fact that since I've put Battleborn lithium power in my nitro, I haven't had any reduction in power. It's been 100% throughout the day. Yep. I don't see any, any drop off. We but. fish in some crazy conditions too. You know, I fish on the Coos River a bunch and rivers all over the country. And when you're fishing in heavy current or heavy wind, I mean, you're not gonna have regular lead acid batteries last right. you all day. And I've never ran my battle boards down. I think it's impossible, honestly. <laughs> I, in a day of fishing, you are not gonna kill those. I things. haven't either. I, I've actually got a cool thing I wanna show you. Cause the other day, I, uh, I put this voltmeter on my battle boards and I was, I was blown away because I've put voltmeters on uh, used uh, lead acid batteries before and you're gonna see like 11.8, 12.2, well beyond, well below what they should be at full power. But Battleborn is different, let me show you. I gotta see this. <laughs> show me the good. Check this out. 13.27, that is nuts. After all day on the water. Fishing it all day. That's the great thing about lithium power is it's consistent throughout the day. It's true what they say. Get out there and stay out there when you're using Battleborns. You can fish all day long and not have to have the headache of worrying about your batteries going bad on you. Very true. For more information, go check them out at battlebornbatteries.com. We'll see you on the water. All right, so they seem to have shut down a little bit. So I'm just gonna start moving around and get to a little different part of this area under the dam here. That incredible schooling bite is something that happens at low light. It can be like a light switch under those dams. Right. I mean, when they're biting, they're biting, and everything in the system in that stretch of the river is biting at that time. But when it dies, it dies completely. And I knew that was coming. I knew it was like, okay, you can't sit up there and do this all day long and just catch them and catch them and catch them. So the fog started lifting, the sun started kind of breaking through, and almost immediately, it just went calm. That's incredible how that works, man. It, it, it never ceases to amaze me when a bite turns off like that just because yep. of the light conditions. Yeah. Mm, strong little fish. Ow. Dang it. Well, I think this is my last cast of the dam for a while. This bite's definitely shut down and there's a lot of other ways to catch them. So I'm just gonna line this one in and then head on down the lake. All right, so I've been flipping shoreline Kissimmee grass uh, pretty much for the majority of the day, but now I want to kind of try something offshore. You know, I've, I've heard a lot of guys are catching them off of brush piles. I've never fished brush piles on, on the Harris chain. And I know that Lake County has been doing a, a lot of, of sinking of brush piles um, and for, for, you know, fish habitat and fish attractors. And uh, so I'm pretty curious to see how the, uh, how the fishing is out here and see if we can find some uh, brush piles too. Oh, check it out. Look at those. Oh my gosh, there's more. That is incredible. Look at all that brush. You see these right here? The way to tell if they're a brush pile is you can see the shadow 
casting off of that, that, that brush. Man, that is awesome. That offshore brush bite is something that I've never really done in Florida, like you're saying. I may be a convert now because it was pretty cool and it wasn't hard to see them. I mean, Lake County did a good job of stacking those, those things up. There he is. That's a better one. That's a good fish. Oh, don't, don't jump. <laughs> Look how white these fish are. Come on in here, girl. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. That fish is about as white as this chatterbait. When they get offshore out here in this dirtier water, man, they just turn white like that. And, and a lot of times, you know, when you, you catch fish that have that real pale white side, um, that means that, that there's probably a lot of fish down there. They're, they're generally schooling together put him back. Sweetwater is brought to you by Z-Man, the science and art of fishing. Bubba, the ultimate lifestyle. Mercury Marine, go boldly. Motor Guide, the tour is back. And by Lake County, Florida. Real Florida, real close. Down in the Harris chain, you know, I was fishing those current seams, those windblown Kissimmee points, and then that bite died. As soon as the wind started to kind of taper off, the bite completely died. And so there was another thing that I really wanted to try. I really had never fished offshore in, in brush piles on the Harris chain, but I've been hearing a lot about Lake County's uh, initiative putting out a lot of fish habitat. You know, they've got all these artificial uh, brush piles out there. And I found one massive brush pile. It was incredible how big that thing was. Brush piles in Florida, that's different. But it's, it is true, I mean, you gotta capitalize on those bite windows, but what you did to adjust, I mean, you just, you can't sit there and kick a dead horse all day long. You gotta know when to switch it up. There he is. Nice. On the chatterbait. Oh, he's coming up. Oh. All right. Oh. <laughs> All right, come on up, baby. Nice. Make a little switch, fish some brush piles. Throw in a chatterbait. Doesn't get better than that. Look at him. He is beat up, man. I want to catch the bass that tore the, the fin off of him to put him back. Great thing about these lakes, man, you can fish offshore, you can fish right on the shore. There's all kinds of stuff that you can do. Let's see if we can catch another one. There he is. There's a good one. Oh, 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 oh man. I gotta admit, this is a little bit more fun than flipping. <laughs> oh, I, man, I, did, I wasn't even sure. I thought that was in the brush pile. Come here. I thought I was in the brush pile. He just loaded up the rod. There we go. Another one on a jackhammer. Me, throwing a jackhammer chatterbait. Can you believe it? I can't believe it. That is kind of crazy that you were in Florida catching bass out of brush, and my next move after that, that bite at the dam got over was to go fish brush piles. And there's a bunch of man-made piles on uh, the Coosa River system too, and most of them are actually put out by other fishermen. But once you figure out what you're looking for on the graph and what you're trying to do to figure it out and find those right piles, it can really get you dialed in in a hurry. Bass and brush piles go hand in hand, man. It's, it doesn't matter where you're at in the country, bass are going to gravitate towards brush piles because that's where the bait fish are. They feel safe there and that's where the bass are gonna hang out. Oh yeah, that might be a good one. Come on, baby. 
Oh yeah, we have got a pile with him in it now. Oh, it's a big, large mouth. Come on, baby. Stay hooked. Oh, look at that large mouth in the pile. Oh yeah, that is beautiful. Jeez Louise, look at that head. That is a pretty, pretty fish. Oh, that's what we're after. Look how he ate that Ned rig too. Just absolutely gorged on it. Got him right in the roof of the mouth in there. Absolutely beautiful. And I will take him. That's a fun bite right there. All right, baby. Thank you, Mr. Largemouth. Look at that thing. Pretty Lake Mitchell bass. Go back down to your brush pile and tell your friends how nice I am. I'm really excited about the opportunity to explore Mitchell with you because we've only fished Logan Martin together. Yeah. And so I really want to try that. Yeah, all the Coos River lakes are a blast. And you know, from the dam fishing down to the brush piles, you know, there's a couple other patterns that work, fishing grass and bluffs and lay downs and stuff like that. But there's, you know, it's just fun to have that many different options. And once you understand a river system, like I understand the Coosa, or like you understand Florida, I mean, the opportunities are endless to go out there and have a blast and put a bunch of fish in the boat.